Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Growing Pains of a Startup Business. And this time, I am excited to bring on someone who is not only a TV personality, but she is actually my coach. And it was only because of her that I'm on camera today. And uh, so, you know, I am really excited to introduce her. And uh, now she has transitioned to a full-time coach for video marketing and cons uh, consulting for small businesses. You know, she has had an extremely fulfilling job as a TV personality, and now she has taken on the huge responsibility of training coaches like myself. So... Without much ado, I'd love to introduce Cheryl to you. So Cheryl Puff, I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you so much, Tony. Honestly, it's humbling when you introduce me like that. It's been, you know, it's been quite a journey, and I know that we're going to be talking a lot about the startup journey for entrepreneurs. Um, and it's been my absolute pleasure to be your coach too. And it makes me so proud to know that I had a little bit of, you know, impact on getting you on camera because look at what a great job you're doing. So I am <laughs> super, super excited to be here. <laughs> Thank you. And it wasn't a little job, let me tell you, because, uh, you know, I, you know, I'm a photographer as well. And, you know, there's a reason I stayed behind the camera and it, it it really took me a lot to come in front of the camera and I think you made it so so easy for me all credit goes to you thank you so Cheryl I would actually love to begin with maybe if you could tell us a little bit um, you know a little bit more in details about your background like where you're coming from um, you know how you decided to even transition from a full-time job to a business well I am a longtime broadcaster I've been in front of the camera for over 25 years and in the last 17 years, I've been on national television. And so it's been my career to be talking to a camera. But here's the thing, and, and I'll be truthful with you. I mean, the TV industry, as we know, is changing. It has evolved. And so I, you know, of course, have seen those trends as well. So maybe about uh, four or so years ago, there was, some, uh, there was a reorganization that happened at our company where um, you know, things just started to evolve in a way that I kind of, I don't know if I want to say saw the writing on the wall, but it's something inside of me started to sort of well up in me of, you know, I wonder if I could start my own business. I'd love to be able to work from home. I'd love to be able to have my own business. I think that's a common experience that people have. Um, but I think that's a conversation that we often have with ourselves. And so it just sort of like kind of started to, creep up inside me. And then um, I decided actually one day I was in the studio and it just occurred to me, I don't know, it just came, came out of the bloom, sitting in a green room. And, um, and it occurred to me that, and I've always been fascinated with entrepreneurship. I should just preface that personal development and entrepreneurship. Um, and I love entrepreneurs. I love the spirit that entrepreneurs have to, to go out there and start a business. And it occurred to me that a lot of the stuff that I do in my broadcasting career, as far as communication is concerned to the camera, could help entrepreneurs to build their businesses. It just occurred to me. Mm -hmm. So one day I decided, okay, what if I was to take all of the nuggets of wisdom that I have garnered over the last 25 years and started to help entrepreneurs to be able to communicate with the camera? Because it's pretty obvious that video is where it's at. So that was sort of a, a quick, you know, evolution of how that all materialized. And then uh, more recently in the last um, couple of years, I've been actively pursuing that and doing coaching and helping entrepreneurs like yourself uh, to get on camera. So, um, so that's the long and short of it. I'm a broadcaster. I saw that there were some things I knew and I could apply my knowledge to help others grow their businesses. And I am also very much an advocate for entrepreneurs like, like us to spend more time with our families. I think that's really all. I see that there's a pattern. We're too busy. We're running ragged. Absolutely. And I think our families are suffering. And so I would like to see more people taking that route and trying to find a way to earn a living where they can spend more time with their families. Wow. Um, that is uh, definitely that's fantastic because you're you're right, and uh, you know I still have my corporate job right even though I've gone down to working four days a week, um, you know I have been a single parent and um, it, it's 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 tough and you think that you know you 
you're doing all this for your family, but you don't have time to spend with them. Like that's kind of ironic, isn't it? It is. So, yeah. So but, but at the same time, I think it's, it's one of those things where you put in the work and it, and it, is, it is tough at the beginning. Absolutely. It really is. The startup phase is the hardest part. Well, mm -hmm. the startup and the hustle phase mm -hmm. are both the hardest stages of the business development. And, it, and it's only the strong will survive, right? It's like Absolutely. a survival of the fittest. Yeah. And I think that if you can just get through that, that tough part, um, the more challenging part, the reward is at the end of that. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, so that also actually uh, brings a thought to my mind. So I know that in my businesses, in both my photography and now my coaching business, I've worked with multiple coaches, okay? Because it, like you said, the startup and the hustle phase are the toughest. And I think, um, you know, a mentorship plays I, or should play a big role in all, you know, all startups' uh, lives. What is your opinion? Like, that's my opinion because I've worked with mentors and I still do. So what is your opinion on that? I think it's crucial. I think it's essential. Um, I really don't think that you can effectively build a business and be able to sustain through the startup and hustle phase um, long enough if you go alone. Mm -hmm. I have a coach and everything changed for me when I hired a coach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I believe that, um, but that's it. You know, you really do have to, and, it, and, it's, and it's tough because there's an investment that needs to be made there clearly. Um, but the thing is, is if you connect with a, a good coach, they're going to fast track you. They're going to help you to get to the thing that you want faster so that you can sustain yourself through those tough periods of the startup. Um, you know, and so, because I feel like if you just try to go it alone, what ends up happening is that you try to cobble together a bunch of stuff from a bunch of different places. There's lots of free information out there. And if you, you spend so much time and energy trying to cobble all the pieces together to make sense of it for free, that you waste time. So what I feel like, uh, you know, what I believe is that if you find the right person, mm -hmm. invest in that person and, and learn what you need to learn fast so that you can apply you know, that's really what changed it for me. When I hired a coach, um, mm -hmm. everything changed. And so I would highly, highly recommend going that route. Mm -hmm. um, I love that because I also love a saying that if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together, you know, and it's so true. It's so true because I, I kind of experienced it in my own business when I was doing photography. Like the first couple of years, I was yeah. trying to do it on my own because I taught myself photography as well. I didn't kind of go to, I didn't have a formal education in photography. Right. And uh, I was almost on the verge of closing down because I wasn't making money. Yeah. I was uh, charging rock bottom prices, not valuing myself enough. That's yeah. another thing I think a coach helps you do which yeah. you did for me as well, because I had these little, you know, um, anxieties about coming on camera and thinking I'm not good enough to be on camera, but you changed that for me completely. And it's so all mindset. So much of entrepreneurship is mindset. Absolutely. You know, yes, there's technical and yes, you have to go through certain phases and there's stages and there's yeah. tools and there's resources, you know, it's mindset. And you're absolutely right. I think that we don't, we don't know what kind we don't often see the type of value that we have. Mm -hmm. We need almost need a third party to be able to um, help us to discover what that value is within us. Mm -hmm. And if I had a small part in that for you, then I'm, I'm that makes me happy. Um, I felt that that was the case with my own coach as well. Um, mm -hmm. Really helped me to see that what I'm doing and how I can help someone transform from point A to point B is is valuable and um and not being able and not being afraid to step into that value um absolutely totally agree with that right so um when you still had your job your full-time job and you were also working on your business yeah. what was your biggest struggle because it's hard because you had a very demanding career yes and you had a family yes okay so let me preface this and kind of lay the lay it out on the line here I have a young son who is a pretty good little athlete. He's in a lot of sports and at a high level of sport. 
He is in, you know, rep hockey and rep baseball. Oh. So pretty much sports all year round, mm -hmm. summer included, right? So um, he's always in camps. He's always playing games, you know, everything. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and, and my husband works long hours. Uh, he's also in television and works long hours. So, um, and then I work, you know, worked a full-time job. I had to commute to get to that job because I don't live in the city where I work. I had to, I was in the car at least two hours a day on a good day, and wow. of course through driving through a Canadian winter. Of course, uh, that ups that number. <laughs> I have had many drives home where it was three four hour drive home in snowstorms. Oh, so I've spent a lot of time in the car, mm -hmm. and um, the challenge for me was time. The challenge was figuring out how am I going to, and then, you know, of course, as a mom, and, you know, I want to keep my house, you know, respectable <laughs> and tidy. Um, I, you know, I'm in charge of getting the groceries and, you know, all, all of the things that come with daily life. And then plus chauffeuring my, my son around to different things. Uh, my husband does that, of course, too. We share those responsibilities, but time. And so time was the issue. And so what I often did was, um, what I would do is I actually would try to optimize the time I spent in the car. Because I looked at it, I look at it things, I think maybe analytically. So I looked at the situation and I was like, okay, I'm in the startup. I don't have time. What am I going to do? Well, I have a lot of, I'm spending a lot of time in the car driving. How could I maximize that time? So what I started to do, one of the things I started to do was I started to record uh, voice memos on my phone while I was driving. So if I'm driving and I had the phone next to me or up on my uh, dash and I would just hit record and I would record voice memos to myself. I would make to-do lists that way. I would record ideas that I had for videos or mm -hmm. ideas that I had for lead magnets that I could help people with certain training. Mm -hmm. um, I also, um, you know, would get up sometimes in the middle of the night when the house was quiet and I would go on the computer and I would work, you know, it'd be two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning. I'd get up early. I, my normal time to get up was four fifteen, four thirty. 30. Wow. So I'd get up at three and I would do an hour of work before I started my day. I did that many times. I would um, come home in the afternoon and I would work uh, maybe an hour and a half before I went to pick up my son from his after school program. Um, I would pull over to the side of the road at gas stations on the 401 and conduct strategy calls on the phone at gas stations. My um, goodness. Yeah. I just did whatever I had to do. I would bring my notebook with me and I'd pull over at the Petrocan and I would get on my scheduled call and I would sit and I would take my notes and I would be listening. I would be present, but I was sitting in a parking lot at the gas station. Um, it, you know, you do what you have to do to get through that. And I think it's really a great quality to be resourceful. Mm -hmm. when you are in that startup phase. I completely agree. And uh, exactly, I mean, for me too, it's the same thing. And um, now photography is a little bit slow, but it's still an active business. I'm still doing shoots here and there. So trying to maximize the time is, I think, even for me too, is probably one of the biggest challenges. So I love what you, you know, the little ideas that you gave about you know, how you can maximize your time wherever you are. I do exactly the same thing. In fact, I gave up driving because it was getting so frustrating for me. I said, I'd much rather be on that bus working, you know, and that's what I do. And even though the bus stop that I, um, I normally, I should be getting up from, the buses are so crowded, I have to stand. So I actually drive a little farther, um, you know, down so I can get a seat on the bus so I can do my work or read wow. or do whatever, you know? Well, and hey, one, one of the other challenges too, of course, when you're doing this is that you have to be creating content. Absolutely. And, and that can be challenging. Some of the things that I um, just occurred to me that I do, I would batch record my videos. So I would record a whole, I would record four videos at a time rather than one. And then I would schedule mm -hmm. them out. Or mm -hmm. I would, um, if I'm at the hockey rink and my son's playing hockey, I would create images mm -hmm. with apps on my phone and I have them all um, automated with a certain program that allows it to go out to all social platforms. So when I'm sitting there, I'd be like inspired and be like, oh, I got an idea that would help somebody. And I would do my image and I would post it, you know, while I was at the rink or at the baseball diamond. That is amazing. So um, Cheryl, if I were to ask you, you know, what would your... Uh, what would your message be to all those people that, you know, they are employed, and, but they have this dream, 
you know, kind of inside them, but they're really afraid to take the leap. And I know you have done it, you know, coming from such a successful career, you've done it. So what would your message to them be? Well, my message would be find someone who can help fast track you. I really think that it's worth the investment to look at that. I believe that we need to be creating original content and finding a way to do that. Again, if that's the challenge, find someone who's going to be able to help you to make the content without driving yourself crazy. You see the connection? So I think it's finding help. You know, it's not going alone. It's not looking at this and saying, okay, I've got to do this all by myself. Right. Find a way to um, find someone who's going to help you fast track it so that you can get to that destination faster. Um, creating original content, I think, is super <laughs> important. Of course, I'm coming from a video you know, place where yeah. I believe video is the way to go for yeah. that um, because it does, yeah, it does save time when you do it in the way I teach it. Um, I would, I would say that those are really the, the two big things. And just, you know, dig your heels in and say to yourself, there is no way I'm going to fail. I will not fail at this. I'm going to keep going until I find a way. It's, it's just being determined and committed and almost to the point of being obsessed with it. Mm -hmm. I think you have to be obsessed with it because there are too many distractions in our day-to-day -day lives and too many people, frankly, around you who don't understand your desire exactly an entrepreneur um, and they doubt and they're skeptical it's happened in my own life um, you know you have to just dig your heels in and believe more than anything and I know that sounds cliche but it is the truth you it have is the truth your ability despite what your family says despite with your and, and people are gonna roll their eyes oh yeah online oh, you know or whatever <laughs> you know what I mean it's like you know that it works because you've, and the reason that you're doing it is because you've seen other people do it. Why not you? Exactly. Exactly. You? Yeah. I love that. I love that message. And I hope that, you know, more people will get excited and motivated, you know, because it is doable. You know, you've done it. You've had such an, you know, awesome career and such a demanding job. Despite that, you know, having a young family and everything, you know, you've done it. So I'm doing it as well. So, you know, why not? And I'm a very average person, very honestly, you know, so. You know, it's funny that people, people say, oh yeah, but you're on, you know, you're on national TV and, you know, okay. <laughs> I've been doing this a long time. The truth is, you know, I, I, when I started going on camera, when I started to be, you know, getting into broadcasting it was a long time ago still, but at that time I was awkward and shy. And I think if I were to really analyze myself, I'm actually an introvert, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, you know, if I can do it and I had a high pressure job, yeah. I had, you know, commuting in, in the way I had responsibilities at home, responsibilities at home, like we all do. If I can do it, trust me, you can do it too, but just fast track yourself. I think that would be the biggest thing. Absolutely. So uh, what are your plans for growing your business? So maybe if we can just get, you know, like, like a brief um, outline of what you're planning to do and what we can look forward to from you. Well, you know what, my goal is to, you know, when I was doing my uh, business and in, in all, you know, just as I described, I did reach um, a certain level financially, but I really want to take it to the next level financially. Um, and also I want to impact and help 100,000 entrepreneurs. Wow. Who, yeah, that's the number that I've got. And, and you know, whether that it could be something simply as through my Facebook group, you know, to, to help people to inspire them and motivate them and show them and teach them how to use video to grow their businesses. So that's one of my uh, more short term to medium term goals is to help 100,000 entrepreneurs see the light and what I like to call have their video breakthrough so that they can start growing their businesses with video. Wow. Fantastic. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to your next program to be very honest, because yeah. I think I need to take it now to the next level. Like I've gotten where, you know, I need to know the basics and now I need to um, get going farther. Yeah. I mean, there's lots of pieces, right? I mean, there's yeah. the content creation part, which is what we worked on together. Yes. There, there's that. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's marketing, right? Okay. And, and there's messaging and marketing and tools mm -hmm. to make that process more seamless and to automate it mm -hmm. so that things kind of run in the background 
um, for you. So yeah, I think that there's different phases of it, but um, I'm, I would love to work with you on that, of course. Um, but yeah, the content creation phase, super, super important to be creating your own content. Right. A lot of entrepreneurs, what they do is they go, oh, and they grab other people's content. Exactly. That, yeah. Which it's okay to do that, I think, if, if it's something really, really appealing to your audience. Mm -hmm. But you also need to be, for the majority of the time, mm -hmm. creating stuff that comes from you, from your mind, from your heart. Exactly. And creating that and, and you know, tangible, shareable pieces of content. It, video I think is the preferred method and getting it out there so that people get to know you that's really my specialty it's helping people to authentically communicate on camera so that they can make those connections and then build their audiences absolutely well Cheryl it was such a pleasure talking to you today and um, I know we are going to be in touch and uh, uh, you know I just wanted to put it out to my viewers that you know all her uh, website and social platform handles etc they're all at the bottom so make sure you you know follow her uh, she is amazing if you are planning to do a video course um, make sure you kind of get in touch with her because she really is amazing if she could pull me out of my shell <laughs> pull anybody out of their shell <laughs> lovely well you know what Tony you're going places and I'm so proud of you I'm proud of you for putting yourself in front of the camera and look at you now look at you now right you're interviewing and you're you know you're making it happen and you're an inspiration you're an inspiration to me thank you so much thank you Cheryl and uh, I'll be in touch with you again soon